Hello, I'm Citrus, and you're looking at the accessories and eventually the core block and core fighter of the Perfect Grade RX-78 II Gundam. This is part 5 and final part of the build series before the big review where I put everything together. And you're looking at the accessories first because they're actually really quite simple and I'll probably be able to run through them for you very quickly. So uh, let's start first with these beam savers. So these are the beam sabers, and you can see that they are mostly featureless. Just a couple of panel lines along the bottom, and here for the button. There's a little tab that flips out that uh, goes into the hand, and you can fold them back down. But this is really stiff, and the reason why I left them out is because I don't really want to put them down and risk not being able to get them out again. And they are quite long, but they're not really tapered too well. So they don't look as slim and sharp as beam savers tend to do uh, on master grades or even real grades these days and they're really quite large you could feasibly use them as chopsticks which is rather funny next you have the beam rifle nothing too special here either so it does have the gimmick where the top half of the gun can lift up and let me just it's quite tight here, but lift that up and it reveals some small details on the inside. Very, very little part separation here. Basically just two halves here, two halves here, the scope, cap on the end, and the muzzle on the front. The handle down here moves, the scope moves, and that's basically it. Two tabs that come out, this one for hanging on the backpack, or sorry, the back of the waist, and this tab which comes out for the hand, like so. And last but not least is the Gundam shield. Lots of nice detail on the inside, and looks pretty good. A bit thicker than I would have expected, proportionally. But it definitely looks very solid. Most of it is hollow, so it's not too heavy. And hopefully, uh, when I put this on the finished Gundam, it won't be too heavy for it to wield. And you have a sliding panel up here for covering the sight out of the shield. And that's basically it. You'll notice that uh, the rifle and the shield are completely devoid of decals, and it's because in the instruction manual, in the back with the decal diagram, the weapons are completely left out. The only reason that the beam sabers have that little one right there near the switch is because as you can see here, there's a little decal there and I just found two extras on the sheet and stuck them on. As far as that, there are still a few left over, not very much, um, but there's obviously nothing really, well, big enough to, I think, take advantage of this space. There is just a little bit room left for customization though, so we'll see if uh, I can find any good places to put any of these. Moving on to the core block, it's basically just that, a single block. Uh, nothing on it moves, unlike the core block that I believe came with I forgot which one, but there was a version of the um, Master Grade Gundam. I think it was probably the version 1.5. And it came with a little hatch that you could like slide open and close on this. But there's nothing here. It's just the pilot in the back end. That's pretty much it. A lot of molded detail. Very, very sharp. But again, almost no part separation here. Just uh, two halves for this. Piece on the end and a piece on the front, and that's it. Uh, a lot of, a little bit of part separation would also make this a lot easier to paint, but as it is, it looks like you're either just gonna have to go in with a steady hand or a lot of masking. And last, but certainly not least, and easily my favorite accessory is the Core Fighter, complete with chrome landing gear. And you can see that this is probably the only area of the entire kit where Bandai may have gone a little overboard with the decal layout. Um, but it certainly looks, you know, on par for perhaps a kit released today. A 
lot of realistic touches. But uh, I'll have to say that arranging some of the tight arrangements like on the wings and on the sides here was a bit difficult because, as I mentioned at the very beginning, the decals are not very well cut. So you'll probably have a lot of overlap if you don't trim them first. So let's see, where should we start? All right. So the cockpit opens and slides back, as you would expect with most core fighters. And it comes out pretty well. You have flip up missile bays on both sides. And in my opinion, in my experience dealing with RX-78 kits, these have been the easiest to open. Um, I haven't messed with the 135th hard graph one yet, but this one's really good. And once we pop off the landing gear, which are attached to the inside with poly caps, take a little bit of wiggling around. You'll see that there are the open landing gear bays, and you can actually close the doors over them, which is a really nice touch, so there are no holes underneath. Now, I believe this one actually is for a sort of stand. I, there's no functional use for it in the transformation or anything like that. And it would be nice if this did come with a stand, but it doesn't, fortunately. So this is, I guess, the flying mode, and then you can fold that up as usual. Push the nose in, fold it in, and the linkages pull all of that in together, and you get a nice core block. Roughly the same size, and very solid, pretty hefty. Actually, this core block, according to the construction manual, is actually supposed to be almost the exact same color. So it really would have been nice if they at least broke this up into red, blue, or something, just e or even just separate pieces so that, you know, it'd be easier to paint, but this is just, ugh. So this is completed core block. Looks pretty good. My only misgiving is that because of the scale and size of this particular version, it really emphasizes how stubby and tiny the wings are, and it makes it even less believable that this thing could actually fly in atmosphere, but... Um, you know, the overall transformation and sol construction is really solid, and I really like that. Alright, so that's it for this section. Uh, next time that you see me, again, will probably be the full Perfect Grade RX-78 review. I have to figure out how to matte coat the whole thing, because it's rather large, but as soon as I'm done with that, I'll be back. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Mr.